Everything's coming up greener. Here's Harold Matthews. He is the Garden Doctor. The Garden Doctor. Hello, Connersville, and welcome back to the Garden Doctor Show. Mrs. Garden Doctor on my right. I like her better on my left, but, you know, I had surgery over here, so if I can get her over yeah. here on the right. Well, that's your good elbow. That's right. It works for me today. I hope you're getting rained upon. We've been missed by these these showers that uh, people, everybody around us are getting, and we've had to do some watering. Uh, things were dry, especially those things that were in containers. Speaking of one thing that's in a container, it's now sitting in my car, cooking. It was dry to begin with. It'll definitely be dry by the time we get out. Guess whose fault that is. Well, we, 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 do, we do not point fingers, and we don't mention He always it. points his finger at me. So, we're going to try to have a, uh, a conversation about plants that like the shade. A lot of people have major problems growing things in the shade. One of the things that people try to grow in the shade is grass. If you have too much shade, and I'm talking about anything that is over 50%, you're pushing it to grow grass in the shade. There are some shade tolerant grasses, but they're not that great. Uh, chewing fescue, red fescue is one of them. So uh, you can grow grass in the shade, but you have to be very, very diligent. If you have shade that you can thin, and by that I don't mean necessarily removing the trees, I mean actually thinning the tree out. People wanna butcher these trees and whack the tops off. That just makes them grow thicker and there's even more shade that doesn't that doesn't help you can remove some of the limbs some of the branches open up the tree and allow the sunlight to come through it's like a dappled light and that will improve the conditions that are underneath it for growing grass but we're going to talk about growing other plants besides grass today and one of the plants that I was surprised to discover that there were uh, as many as there are are roses. Now, I've always um, um, suggested very strongly that you grow roses in 100% light, no shade whatsoever. And so when, a, when we, we started getting questions about growing roses in shade, I had to do some research. And, and I guess. didn't really think it was possible. I grew roses in Florida, and the rule of thumb was full sunlight yeah. and lots of water. And so, yeah, down in Florida, you would be lots of water. Sure. You actually have to let them dry out up here in between the waterings. They, they don't like continuous water because um, they, they want to, all plants like to dry out a little bit. They some, want to get thirsty. There are some. Now, daylilies can stay wet uh, often, you know, most of the time, but uh, and some of the irises can, but uh, most plants like to dry out in between. Now, I guess we haven't had the wrong, the right variety because we have also tried to grow roses in shadier areas and they have not produced very well and we've had to move them and so we were still under that assumption, but I guess you just have to get the right variety of rose and there are some. Yeah, now I have been successful uh, without knowing that uh, this rose was uh, a quality rose for the for the shade just by getting lucky I purchased uh, some some knockout roses when they first came on the market and they are fabulous yeah they're, they're knockouts. Knockouts. they are exceptional they they're resistant to disease they're resistant mm -hmm. to black spot um, they are very salt tolerant they're they don't require excessive hardy. pruning and picking they're you know you just self-sufficient yeah. yeah pretty much you do have to, to fer I prefer to fertilize them and and I'm going to talk about their hardiness here in a minute but this variety what is it it's called rad raz it's a knockout rad raz rad raz <laughs> that's what it says r-a-d-r-a-z-z -Z. I think that's what anyway it I was trying all of the different uh, knockout roses I happen to plant rad raz and I planted it in a, in a a place where the trees as they developed per, uh, shaded this area more than I intended it to and um, uh, they did very well and I was surprised and then I find out if I'd read the tag in the first place and looked up the, the uh, history of this plant and, and why it was uh, and through its development 
I would have known that this plant is very highly rated for partial shade. Partial shade is about four hours a day, five hours a day. Uh, you still need sunlight. You can't do without and sunlight. And they do recommend really no less than four hours a day of sunlight. That is Which considered is very a little shade for plant. most For most plants, it is. that's very, very little. Now, um, we've got a list of other shade plants too, but we had a lot of questions about shade gardens, and I was interested, and then the, the question about shade roses. So, we have a list, a short list here of roses that grow in the shade. Now, um, we, we discounted Well, the that. one is a golden showers. That really that's makes That's a them, climbing yeah. rose. That's a climbing rose. That's one of the ones that... Does uh, very well. Yeah, and then... Um, There's one called Playboy. Yeah, Playboy is... Uh, and some of these names... I think names, it's a Jackson Perkins. I want to know who sits around and thinks up these names. Well, they can't pick the names that everybody else has picked. Passionate is, Kisses. Hey, that's another one. They and actually, Golden Showers. Oh, well, really? Just never mind. And Playboy. And wow. And Marmalade. Okay, you done? I'm done. Okay. Sorry. Move Moving right along. So we have marmalade is another one that grows in the shade. And these are uh, roses that I was not even aware of uh, that, that had this uh, versatility. So then you've got... And again, got the tags. Uh, I, I used to pretty much ignore the tags and think, well, you know, I'll put this here and there. The tags are so important. That information, if you pay attention to it, about how much shade it requires, how much water, the type of soil it requires, is actually very good information. Then we have Crown Princess... What, what is, is that? this? Margarita. Uh, I guess so. And then uh, this one here, Kathleen Rose Blooms. Yep, Kathleen, that's called Kathleen. It says the Kathleen Rose does bloom in partial shade. I think shade. there's a number of Kathleen <clears throat> Roses, I think. I think Kathleen is a category of roses. I don't know. Um, uh, I thought that was anyway, the name of a hybrid. If you search <coughs> online or, you feed or me? whatever, <coughs> uh, you can find these roses. Now, of course, <coughs> many of them you have to buy uh, online because I don't know where you would get them. But that particular variety of knockout rose is normally available. Yeah, I've seen anywhere. it. I've yeah. seen it on the tag. Uh, well, yeah. and, it, and it's very readily available. I've had very few problems with it. Now, the other thing is uh, we lost almost no roses over this winter. There were some roses that died back, uh, but we like to fertilize heavy in the um, uh, blooming months and then water our roses when they go into the winter, sometime in October or November. And we even. talked about that before, and I could not understand the importance of heavy watering when it's not that hot and going into the winter months, and he wants me to go out and water, water, water. Well, now I do understand why it did help them get a real good storage, I think, of well, energy. They, is that what it is? And that's part of it. And they also don't go into the winter dry. Ah. So they don't come out of the winter dry. They have, they, they actually stress. can absorb moisture into the root structure and they're not stressed when they come out in the spring. The fertilization replaces all of this vigor and all of this energy that is uh, used up providing you with blossom. So you want to replace that by using a quality time-release fertilizer around the base of it. And of course, it's very important to plant the rose properly, but not one single rose that we had in any of our uh, friends and customers' yards did we lose this, this particular past winter. And part of it had to do with the fact that we had snow coverage. There was oh, some snow coverage. And here. that's protection. That's major protection. Now, we had calls. People had already ripped out the roses. They had, you know, there was some dead on them, so they threw them away. And they, they went over and looked at the compost pile, and the roses are sprouting and budding. And if they're, you, you gotta not get in so much of a hurry to, to yank things out. Uh, and I did go to one place that a lady called me, and, and I visited her yard, and the roses were coming up below the graft. And we had a, a lady that called in with a question about that. Now, uh, that's no good, right? That's a sucker from uh, the rootstock. Right. It's not the grafted hybrid rose part that's above the graft. Right. Okay, um, so you want to cut that off. And if nothing else produces above the graft, it is dead, true. Yeah, you, and I have one of my customers that said, hey, I'm going to battle this. I'm going to cut the suckers off that are coming below mm -hmm. and allow the, 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 there was a weak 
top coming up and they graft it because the top of the rose is weak the bottom of the rose is a stronger rose root mm -hmm. however it's also a kind of a wild rose to be be that strong so you're going to get you might get a, a small red blossom and just multiples of it it might grow six foot tall but it's not uh, worth keeping you might as well it's just not the the rose that, that you had so purchased. cut it off and then wait and see if anything produces above the graft well it's it, usually there is something there there's something above and below okay uh, if if there's something below, generally the top will also come. Now, if it's all gone below the graft, the rose is no good. Now you can throw it away. But I don't like to just give up on a, on a rose uh, uh, until you've given it a good chance. Usually the 1st of June is when we decide, okay, you know what, this rose has got to come and out. And the same with the hibiscus, which we talk about often, uh, often the hybrid uh, hardy hibiscus that um, are beautiful with the paper plate size blossoms. We always say don't give up on those because they are not anywhere near the first things to come out in the spring. You'll have all kinds of other things producing already in the spring and you'll see nothing from those hibiscus. And they are just now really starting to put out foliage long after everything else has already come about and is blooming. And yes, we do have some in our yard. You can't give up on those. They come up later and they're Yeah, they here. don't even start sprouting until, yep. depending on the, the soil temperature. The soil temperature has to be up there. And I, I'm not sure, but I think it's about 60 degrees. Um, uh, I used to know what it was, but I can't remember. But anyway, uh, and that doesn't occur until the end of um, May. Uh, mm -hmm. So middle to end of May, we, we start warming up. If it warms up early, we're all set. But generally, yeah, but you don't even see a sprout till you know. Not a thing. Sometimes we had one year that we didn't see anything until June, and uh, you and just, here they are, and they big just, and strong, they grow wow. like a weed, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, there's these giant yes. blossoms. I if you know them. where Bud Whipple lives, out in front of his place there on the right, there's a whole row of them. We, we oh years ago I put in probably 15 years ago now I put in uh, nine different varieties I think out there. Mm -hmm. but, but anyway, um, and it's a beautiful display right south of the the greenhouse. And you have a pink. There's a white with a red center. There's a solid red, and it's it is a relation to the Florida tropical hibiscus that you see in Florida. But it is a hardy hibiscus. The bloom is different the plan is different they're related yes they are yep back to the shade some people have all kinds of trouble in the shade and they really need to just study what it is they're working on in the shade if you're under if underneath the tree that you're you're trying to uh, uh, grow something is just terrible ground all full of roots and uh, there's, there's very little place to put uh, plants in the soil has been worn out and it would be perhaps better to mulch that area underneath there and maybe put in some type of a ground cover there are ground covers that will grow in 100 percent shade i think we've got some on the video um oh well, some uh, of that little sedum uh it's kind of a ground cover some varieties type of sedum, sedum. Well, they 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 will die out over roots though if they grow over a root in the winter time, uh, that will get so cold that the that that section of ground cover will die out. Now, but part of the questions too about growing in shade is that people want to plant around the base of their tree, and not everything can do that in that type of environment with the roots. It has to you have to dig in between some tree roots, but you want to put in some type of color plant maybe. And that was another thing that we looked up was um, not just roses but other plants that yeah, thrive in the shade. There's a bunch of them. And I I've got some on a uh, mm -hmm. short video we're going to show you here in a little bit. But uh, some of the ones that are not going to be, be shown on there, if you go to your nursery, once you've identified what it is your, your, your environment is, if it's under a spruce tree, totally different. If it's under 100% um, shade where there is absolutely no sun that gets in there, you've got to go for 100% shade. You can't go for something that is shade tolerant. So, uh, and you then want you have dry, shady soil. Dry, you have shade, moist, wet shade. You, mm -hmm. All of these different sandy, conditions. Sandy, well drained, and not so well. Uh, find all of these conditions, every single one of the conditions, and then find the right plant to go in the right and place. And most of that information Bada is bang. on the tag. I should start reading these oh, things. Oh yeah, just, <laughs> I had, should pay attention. That's what he would say. There were a few <laughs> other questions that came in um, uh, that uh, we we were going to try to ask while we're doing the shade thing, and then we'll get to that video. And one of those questions was what's the difference between hybrid and heirloom vegetables 
What is the difference, my dear? Well, heirloom, I would think, goes with the word that you would define heirloom as, as, say, passed down over generations, possibly, where they save the seeds from older varieties, because I do see in catalogs and what have you, varieties of heirloom tomatoes that you just don't see on the market anymore, the names of them. So is that correct? Yes. Uh, can you right, only get them from seeds that are passed down, or can you buy heirloom variety plants? Read that exact definition that uh, is from the um, um, University of uh, Wisconsin. Heirloom vegetables are not a special species of plants. The term heirloom vegetable is used to describe any type of vegetable seed that has been saved and grown for a period of years, thank you, and is passed down by the gardener that preserved it. It has a provenance of sorts. To be capable of being saved, all heirloom seed must be open pollinated. You just lost me. Open pollinated is. Open pollinated or OP plants are simply varieties that are capable of producing seeds that will produce seedlings just like the parent plant and not all plants do this this is true okay um, now what, what they're talking about is an heirloom seed is a seed that stays true so if somebody gives you a big boy tomato open pollinated and they say uh, the, here's the seeds from a big boy tomato. It's going to produce a big boy tomato. Yeah. I used to have okay. uh, Harold's Heavyweight, and we had to grow it for about six years before it was stabilized. And by that, sometimes they'll go back to their parent or back to one of the crosses. So you have to grow them for two or three years to make sure that they stay stable. Once they do that and they are open pollinated, then the seed stays true. So now Harold's heavyweight could be sold, and uh, um, uh, I could I could uh, uh, tell the people that if you save the seed, it'll come true to that ah, plant. Okay. It becomes an heirloom plant. Now, if you pull a tag off of a tomato plant and you see F1 or F2 or F3, what does it mean? That is the generation. This F1 is the first generation that this plant has been made available. It has stabilized itself, and they're, they're offering okay. it in its first generation. If F2, second generation, and so forth. That, that is that part of the equation that tells you uh, what, you're, what you're receiving. Now, if you want to create your own tomato, you can do that, but you have to have open pollinated plants to do so. So you get maybe a brandy wine and a, a German giant and uh, Mr. Stripey and whatever it is you want and do your own cross pollination. Well, what makes a, a plant or a fruit open pollinated? What do, how does open it pollinated is a natural occurring thing. Everything is just about uh, and is open pollinated. The bees pollinate. Okay, that's pollinating is they are capable of it. When we hybrid them, oftentimes they are sterile. So that's done like what? Like kind of sterilely, surgically? They pollinate it to produce it? Uh, they can be, they're can. they made sterile so that you cannot oh. reproduce. Well, so that <clears> the only uh, experience I can relate to with that is as a kid, I had a navel orange, a California navel orange, and took a seed from that orange and planted it. <laughs> I remember and you it grew me. a tree, and it, the, it did produce a fruit, but it was like a big weird looking grapefruit that tasted delicious but obviously it was not a navel orange and I'm assuming those are probably grafted and maybe a different situation but it was not true to the seed that I planted. No, no so, absolutely not. Okay. And the one that you grew may be unlike anything, anything else. Now when you when we hybrid uh, cross uh, let's say irises or daylilies uh, when we do that we never know what's going to come up. You can hybrid a yellow with a blue and get a white. You can uh, get in the same group, you can get a white, a red, a yellow, an orange. Mm. Just out of the same exact pod. Then the each individual seed can only be reproduced by taking that particular plant apart. Okay, so we're going to run this footage 
of the outtakes uh, when they're ready to go in there. And um, uh, then we're going to get back to this list of, of uh, plants here. But let me remind you, this is a live show. Yes, and, we are uh, live we're, tonight. We're here live. We're sitting right here, rain on the roof. Yeah, and uh, give us a call. And uh, if you have a question, I know you like to do it this way, but if you, can, if you want to call us live, as soon as this is over, give us a buzz. Are we ready to roll them, gentlemen? Let's roll that beautiful bean footage. Hello, and welcome to the Garden Doctor's Backyard. We spend a lot of time out here, and we're going to have to spend a lot more time before our annual sale, which is this weekend coming up, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, because there's a lot of weeds out here. We did not get to things as we should have this year. This in front of me right here is plumbago. Now, my wife said when she moved up here, she said, gee, I'd really like to have some plumbago. Well, the plumbago she was talking about was the bright blue annual that grows in Florida but will not grow up here. This is the plumbago ground cover. This did not do extremely well. It took a long time to establish it, but we finally got it growing. It, it will grow in the shade, but it likes the sun. As a matter of fact, it'll grow in very hot sun. And once we cut some of the limbs above this uh, this planting right here off, this thing has done beautifully, and it'll, it'll bloom with a gorgeous blue blossom a little later on. Right over here is a bleeding heart. Now, this will grow in the shade. And by the way, this is a show about shade. Uh, we're trying to uh, give you some suggestions for shade plants. Hosta, always a good bet for shade. These are guacamole. Uh, a very good hosta. It's uh, semi-resistant. Uh, we have a couple of this one over here is not quite as large as, as the other one. I'm going to walk around over to the tree and show you some of the other plants that we have in our backyard that do grow in the shade. Now this environment that we've got here now is more sunny than it used to be. We had uh, a large hackberry here, the one that's right behind me, and we took off four of the top limbs. And, and in removing those limbs, we've changed the, the lighting in here in the environment. This rose hated it here. Uh, it was not getting enough sunlight. It, it doesn't like competition from other plants. Roses want to be out by themselves, and they like to be fed, and they like a lot of nutrients, and they like full sun. Now, there are a few exceptions. Michelle's going to tell you about those later on in the show. Another beautiful hosta. This one's a semi-dwarf. Dwarf. Around it is a sedum. Sedum will grow in shade, uh, but it's a full sun plant, and it's done so much better once the limbs were taken off. It really took off. Another plant, Silver Mound. I love it. About the 4th of July, we cut them off. We allow them to come back strong, nice, soft plants. If you don't cut them off, they'll blow. They just they get all seedy in the middle and break apart, So and they, they don't do a very good job. But this plant didn't do all that well either until the limbs came off, and it's done much better. You can try to grow sun plants in the shade, but generally you'll be unsuccessful. This plant, the corbel, and there's a lot of corbels, loves the shade. Now, it, there are a few that will grow in almost full light, but they really like morning light only uh, if you're going to uh, raise the corbels, and, and they do like the shade. Dead nettle is an exceptional plant for the shade. Really, really good plant. Strong, will grow underneath uh, spruces and pines, which is very rare. Back in behind here, we have a geranium, right behind the weed, right big old pigweed there. We have a geranium. There's uh, five or six varieties of that. You have to watch this, though, because it looks a whole lot like a weed, and my guys tend to pull it a lot. Okay, uh, we're going to inject this into the into the mix. This is the variegated sergeant stripes. Grows in the shade, but you have to watch it. It can get invasive. This is cat mint, and it loves the shade. It does a real nice job. It's a mound, has nice blossom on it. This is a fern that I brought back from New Hampshire. I, I just put a little piece of it in. This is in almost full shade. This is the only time of the day that it gets a little bit of light. And this thing is beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? If you want to fill some a heavy shaded area with a, a gorgeous carpet of fern, that's, uh, that's the variety right there. But it choked out every other fern that I had in here. Let's move to the front. Hello. I am six foot one. And look at the size of the hibiscus that's in my yard that I got from my wife. This is the plant that we talk about often. 
don't give up on the hardy hibiscus. These came through the winter, they came through a drought, they've come through a lot of things. They do like the water though, and they do require staking on occasion. Now, I am kneeling down, but there are some hibiscus that get to seven, eight, nine, and 10 feet. This one has gigantic pie plate blossoms. Uh, it is Lord Baltimore, and then we have over here the one that is dark leafed. That one has uh, a totally different blossom. It's a deep pink, and that one's called Plum uh, Crazy. And then there's other uh, hibiscus across the front here as well. Uh, the hibiscus likes full light and they do like staked if they're the old larger varieties and then there are some new dwarf varieties you want to plant them well though really really take some time to plant the, the hibiscus well because you're going to have it forever if you do plant it well and make sure you water it in july june and july those are the two most important months and fertilize it so it'll bloom better I forgot to tell you about the update on the garden. Here's our garden. We showed you videos right here. We put straw down. I told her to put newspaper under it. No, no newspaper. Look at this. I had to mow the weeds through here. Had to take a bush hog, well, a bush hog mower, and mow through here. It was full here. Now there's some beautiful dill in here. Oh, I love dill. I plant dill in the garden for no other reason than I like to step on it and smell it. Over here we have some beets if you can find them in the weeds. And I pulled some out there so that, so that I could. But I'm going to show you where we have done this same thing with the straw. And you can do it with grass clippings. And this time we put plastic under it. Okay, we're going to go over that way. I'm back. You know, I get a little senile. Eh, the sun's getting to my brain and everything. So when I tell you I'm done, I'm not really done. I, I just forget what I was doing. Okay, over here, straw on top. To, we'll keep the weeds out. Plastic underneath. And you know, tomatoes love red plastic. We don't know why. Well, I guess the scientists may, but I don't know why. Black plastic is fine. In here, we've got cucumbers. There's some radishes growing in the cucumbers. And when they grow up, then um, we'll pull the radishes and thin out the cucumbers at the same time. Over here are sweet potatoes. Now, the sweet potato plants don't have plastic. They just have the straw to grow their to grow the plants in. It keeps them, holds the moisture in, does a much better job. And you can use a weed preventer in your beds like this. You can throw on a little bit of the garden preen uh, or, or something that, that uh, appropriate. Over past there, we've got uh, peppers. I don't put any mulch around the peppers because they like it hot and dry and arid because they're a, a plant that comes out of Mexico and down in that area. So you don't want to mulch around them because you don't want to hold the moisture in. Thank you very much for watching the Garden Doctor Show. And this time, finally, we are going back to the studio. Hello, and we're back in the studio. Uh, you know, right we just here. came to a realization. We're here at uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. And the live. People, live, and the people yeah. are in the, in the back in the booth there. It takes three people to do all of these different switches and buttons. And, and they buzzers. have given us this wonderful opportunity and beautiful slot and they, their good time. And, and the purpose of being here is to help the viewers to offer up uh, that information. one on one where they can yeah. call you and and get that information now a lot of you like to give me notes and stop me in the <laughs> grocery store and, and we like that too but and we like that but we really would like to have more calls on the live show so i'll tell you what i'm going to do i am retired i still do a few things and and i will do a free consultation a full consultation for your yard uh, for anyone that calls in to uh, the live show. Now, here's what you do. You don't give me any information. You call in. You can ask a question if you wish. You give them the information back in the booth there. And you don't really have to give a name, maybe just an well, address. Well, give or the name and address could, to them. Yeah. We won't put it on, on, no, no, on, no. on, the, on the air. Uh, you give them the information, and I will call you and set up a time to a come out. A house call from now, the garden doctor. Here's what, here's what I do when I come to your house. I assess the entire property. I assess the buildings, the structures, everything that is there, anything that has to do with the outside, the drainage away from your house, the, the gutter system, the downspouts, uh, where the, uh, the where the water is going and where it should be going. And all those things affect your plants and your landscape. The plant material that you have, the maintenance that is required specifically for specific plants in your yard, I'll identify the plants that you have and identify any, any soil problems that you might have, lawn problems that you might have. Now, none of this is work that I want to do. 
okay? This is all to just, just give information. You a, this is information to tell you what it is you need to do. He's not selling you anything. It's free consultation. And I will go over the entire yard. So we, we definitely want to have more callers on the live show. And when we do this, when I do come to your yard, I will have um, uh, my notebook. We, we'll, I'll walk around with it. Then you tell me what it is you want to do in the future, and, and I'll tell you the best way to do that and the plants to install. We have a caller on the line. Yes. Debbie, what can we do for you? Uh, we have this real funny stuff in our yard, and we can't get rid of it. Okay. Um, you can you describe the uh, uh, what it looks like? Uh, just when you pull it out of the ground, it's just real long and stringy, and it just spreads. And oh, okay. Does it have that round kind of leaf? Uh, there's a number of things that you could have, okay? This is in your lawn, or is it in your landscape bed? Uh, the lawn. Okay. And it's kind of a viney thing? Yeah, it just mothers out my grass yeah um there's two things that you need to do and you and i will come to your yard for at no charge not to sell you anything and and tell you exactly what what to do when we get done uh, uh talking here you can give them the information i'll come to the yard and tell you exactly but here's what i will probably be telling you and the problem is it's difficult for me to know exactly without coming to your yard and seeing it. Mm -hmm. So, and I will do that at, at no charge or obligation whatsoever. Uh, but I believe what your problem is, is um, uh, either chickweed or it is a vine that uh, I cannot right at the moment tell you the name of because I'm on, not. pull from memory, man. I'm not the lawn doctor. <laughs> but we'll test the soil we'll find out what the soil conditions are where your ph lies now ph is real cheap to fix if your ph is too low which i su suspect it is we add some lime tell you what how much lime to put on you raise the ph and this plant this weed does not like that so the weed will start dying out and the grass will start filling in now to aid that along, I'll probably suggest a weed and feed. Uh, I'll tell you what to use, when to use it, how to apply it, everything else. And he will tell you to mow high. I know that. And <laughs> you've got to mow high. Because then the grass could grow stronger roots, which then That's smothers right. out all That's other right. invaders there. And, and like I just said, I will come to your yard and, and, ex and explain all of this stuff to you, make sure we get it all written down. But and then... You put the weed and feed on. Now you've put lime on. You put the weed and feed on. Once the weeds die out, in sometime in the middle of August, I'll have you put out an overseeding so that where all of this stuff was, this bad stuff that you want to get rid of, you will be able to grow grass in in those places where this has died out. So it's a it's a three step process. It's not going to happen overnight, and it's better done if we do a soil analysis first and check out the property. So, and uh, if you would like to leave them your name and address after I hang up with you. Any other then... questions while you're here? Uh, no, I don't think so. That okay. is it. Well, yeah. make sure and leave your information uh, with the nice people in the studio here, and Mr. Garden Doctor will come out and make a house call for you. Thank you very much for calling in. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Now, I see that's the thing with the live show. They, they give us this time slot for people to call in. And the problem is if we're not receiving callers, it doesn't There's not look much logic in doing a live like show, show at 7 o'clock at night. Right. You know, I it could be out walleye like the, fishing. I, well, <laughs> it doesn't look like the show is doing well because yeah. if nobody calls. <clears throat> so we, we want to talk to you. We want to hear from you. We love when you talk to us in the grocery store or on the road or on the phone. But we really, really love it when you call into the show because it makes the show look so much better. And we had a dear, I had a dear sweet lady come up to me at Walmart. I wish you, I hope you are watching watching the show tonight yes. I hope you call in. She she came up to Walmart. She told me uh, things. Uh, uh, she said she had watched the show, this last show, three or four or five times over. Make sure that she caught all the little nuances. You met me. I was 
at Walmart. I was getting some plants. Um, um, I like to buy the scratch and dents. I know, you know? and see if I can and save them from one yeah, little sprig. I like and doing that. Because uh, uh, <laughs> that's how you get plants, uh, you know, that I want to experiment with. Although I wish I would never would have saved that one grass because it was everywhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. You're on the air with the garden doctor. I'll be more than happy to answer your question. What you got? Uh, I have a question about pansies. Pansies, okay. Well, my well, husband's an expert. I got, I got a pot for Easter. Yes. Okay. And, of course, they're getting tall and lanky and long. Yes. Uh, how far back should I cut them? Um, are they in full light or are they in quite a bit of low light? No, they're in low light. Okay. You want to increase the light. They won't be as leggy if they get more light. So oh, if there's really? any way possible that you could give them more light, they would appreciate that. Now, once their blossom, heavy blossom season is over, which is when it's cooler, uh, pansies like it cool. The uh -huh. next heavy blossom season on those pansies, if they're if they're uh, kept well, will be in the fall. You'll get uh -huh. another really strong blossom. Now you uh -huh. can prune those back to where there is only two leaves on a stem. Oh, really? Yeah, you uh -huh. can go back pretty hard on that. They want to be fertilized. They want to be yeah. put in a little bit more light. And they yeah. would like to have um, um, another fertilization before they go into the fall. And oh. uh, they should blossom like Oh, you'll get busters. another whole good bloom oh, out yeah. of those in the fall? I've, awesome. I've had pansies that, that bloomed in the spring that were in a six-inch pot, and they were uh -huh. way over the sides in the yeah. fall. And yep. give them more light, honey, even more after light. you blew, uh, cut them? Or? After you cut them, move them into a little bit more light. They don't get as leggy when they have a little bit more light. They like about six oh. hours. They prefer morning light, but, you know, the, if you can't do that, just give them, give them uh, six hours if you can. Well, I had them out on my porch, like where the sun shined on them so much, and it was kind of making them too much sun, I think. Yes, I, I agree. Okay. They don't like all day uh, direct burning light. They, uh -huh. they, they prefer uh -huh. about six hours. So if you can move them somewhere where they get the morning sun. The morning sun is a softer sun. It's not uh -huh. as, as hot uh, and The intense. heat of the day that burns. So uh, especially on uh, cold weather crops, which this is. Uh -huh. this is a, yeah, they a cool do great early in the spring. Oh, yeah, I was amazed that pansies snow. were, you know, like They're that. They're tough. Pansies are, are quite tough. Uh, so are... Um, um, uh, petunias. Uh, people don't realize I did how not know that. early you can put petunias. Well, in. they were really beautiful, you know, there for a while, but now they're getting. Yeah, groovy. they don't really last very long in the early blossom. And then uh -huh. if you prune them back, fertilize them, uh -huh. and uh, uh, they also don't like to be drowned. They like water, but the people tend to overwater pansies. They they just uh -huh. assume they need uh -huh. a lot more water. So also with those, kind of let them dry out till they need you know need yeah. a drink, and mm -hmm. then water them really. Good. Good, good uh -huh. solid drink. Yep. Okay. And if okay. you would, if you would like, uh, since you called in on the live yes. show, uh, I would be more than happy to come to your house and walk around with you and give you see what other questions on anything you like. Sure. If you, no, if you, I don't think so. Well, that's fine. Okay. I appreciate your call so much. Thank tell, you. Tell okay. your neighbor to call in. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You have calling. a wonderful day. We appreciate it very much. Okay. And like I just said earlier, if uh, if you will call into the live show. Uh, and if you haven't got the she job done. She doesn't want you, honey. <laughs> Aww. Hey, I, I fulfilled her needs uh -huh. fully. See, she was going to call in anyway, there I guess. That's why. Okay. And, uh, if you, if you happen you. to miss out on this show, spread the word around that if uh, you get lined up and you can squeeze it in and call in the next show, then uh, we will we will offer this service again in the next show only. So, I don't know. We might get so many callers, you're going to be running all week. Yeah, that's fine. I would that's hope fine. so. I though. will come You'll visit, love it. and it, it costs you absolutely nothing. And we will. Uh, I will personally visit your yard, go over everything that you need, and perhaps you're, you're about to get a landscape job done. You really need to know a little bit more than, hey, I'd like a plant over here. You need to know what plant will grow over there and, and uh, uh, what plants won't. And take advantage and of his experience. He's not trying to sell anything. He doesn't need any new jobs, I'm that's for sure. Yeah. And, and, no, and no really, more work. He just <laughs> likes to talk to people. In case you didn't know, he likes to talk. So he will definitely come over, answer your yard questions, and, and enjoy doing it. It's not an inconvenience at all. Yes. So...
Well, hello, Lori. Lori. Thank you're you for calling. With the garden and Mrs. Garden Doctor, what can we do for you? I had a question about starting hollyhocks. Is it true that you could start get starts of hollyhocks from just picking somebody's blossom? Now, is that hollyhocks or yes. lilacs? No, hollyhocks. Hollyhocks. Okay. Yes. Now, so holly hollyhocks. Yeah, hollyhocks. You yes, the blossom, but only after the blossom has gone into a seed pod and is fully developed. You don't want to pick off the uh, seed pod too early. Hollyhocks are very easy to grow. Uh, they grow in alleys. They used to be called the alley plant, as a matter of fact, because really? people would just throw the seeds up and down the alley and they'd grow right along in the no little kidding. tiny strips ah. in the alley. And of course, they make uh, dolls out of them. Remember yes, that? Uh, a friend of mine, Phyllis the Hawker, told me when she was a little girl, she said, we didn't have much to play with. There was like 11 kids. And they used to uh, poke the stem through the upside down flower and make dresses and then one somehow on top and make little dolls out of hollyhock blossoms. I, I thought do that was that. cool. Yeah. yeah, I think you can find it online. I think I did. I looked it up on YouTube or something. I thought something. that was so cool. But anyway, cool. so you want to allow the, the uh, plant to almost dry up, and you'll, you'll see the seeds. They're in the pod. But you want them to be fully mature, and then you take the seeds, and you can start them in the fall if you wish. But really, it's better to wait until next spring. Keep, those, keep all of the seeds, and they won't come necessarily exactly the color that you, that you pick off. If you pick white ones, you may not always get white oh, So they're not ones that stay true it, to the... Well, it depends on whether okay. you have a hybrid uh -huh. or whether you have a um, open pollinated that ah. uh, where it's, it's being pollinated by a bunch of other I see. Uh, hollyhocks around. Now, you take the hollyhock seed and you want to scarf it a little bit when you get ready to plant it. Like with an emery board, just, yeah, just scuff take it an or emery board sandpaper. Or a piece of sandpaper and, and scarf it a Scratch little bit. It. And it's a, it's a good idea also to soak it. Soak the seed, let it swell up a little bit, and then plant it. And then you're going to get a, oh, 80, 90% of them to grow. Awesome. You can't just scatter them out. You can't just throw them down because I have hollyhocks growing yep. all over my yard. Volunteers. They pop up everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and if you would like, you can come out to the plant sale. Now, I don't have any hollyhocks that we can... Um, I don't know. They're kind of uh, scattered here and there. I don't, I don't have any to sell. However, no you're starts. more than welcome to come back in the fall when it's time for the seeds pods to come on. And, and I'll give you a handful pods. of seeds. Um, okay. So, uh, uh, but we have our annual plant sale. You can come down and see the flowers anyway. Sure. This, this coming weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Down and if you are interested for a house call from the garden doctor and a consultation of any questions you have in your yard, make sure you leave your information with the studio and he'll be happy to come by and take a look. Okay. No Thank charge. You. And I'll let you know what you need to know. Thank All you right, very much you. for your call. We really appreciate it. Thank you. All righty. Well, I night. guess uh, we fired some people well, up out there. I it's wanted to bring up something up. We still up. have some time. Well, you go right ahead. Do you know what today is? Today is a... What? It's Monday. It's our live oh show. Oh, my God. I was afraid it was an anniversary or your birthday or something. Uh, yeah. He, I Holy have, mackerel. He never forgets. I have some water for you. <laughs> no, it is actually on the calendar today as I was looking to see what was happening. Today is Discovery Day. I looked on the internet. I couldn't find a whole lot of information about what Discovery Day was. There's a lot of Discovery Day celebrations, things that are called that. But what it is, it is actually a celebration of the Discovery uh, Discovery of the little islands off the coast of Canada um, by John Cabot discovered Newfoundland in 1497. And this is actually a paid holiday in Canada. Um, I don't know why it's on my calendar, I guess. <laughs> uh, maybe it was you made in Canada. Canadian I don't calendar, know. Really? But I had to look it up and see what is Discovery Day, and that's what it is. I believe it should it's be like a our Columbus holiday. Day for us too. well we have a columbus day canada has discovery day oh, okay. and they have big celebrations and all kinds of things about where his ship was supposedly uh, landed and, and all ah. kinds of cool stuff but i had to look it up and see what that was about today is discovery day. today is that's Dis wonderful it's actually so get out the, and discover something it's it's celebrated on the monday closest to june 24th whenever that falls solstice? which is today no uh, no it's the his date that he actually discovered it was June 24th, but they celebrated on the Monday closest to that date. Spread the word. If you would like the garden doctor to come out to 
your house to do a personal, no charge, no obligation, no nothing. Just give you all kinds of information about your landscape. All right, I might lawn, get jealous trees, about this. Your I gutters, your downspouts, everything else. You're going to be out visiting women at well, their houses and flirting. Been and doing knows. that for years, my dear. <laughs> I know, right? You were doing that when I met you. There so. you go. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. You just call into the, the live show and we leave the information, and I, ain't I will scared. make a personal <laughs> visit. And we really do want your calls. We want to you to call we in enjoy in the it live very show much. so that it, it uh, there is a value to us coming in here at seven o'clock in yes. the evening uh, and on, on the fourth Monday and uh, interrupting it uh, makes us look good and it yeah. gives them a good reason for us to have a live show because there people call so we need justification and we hope we are giving you information we get a tremendous amount of feedback we and, do uh, usually we've had in, one in or person. two negative and that's about it yeah you know uh, they didn't like your shirt you know uh, said yeah, something well. about my hair once <laughs> you know. yeah. I didn't dye my roots oh well uh, well, yeah. well uh, let's talk some more about these shade plants because I did look up oh, some yes. shade loving shade plants. Show. And those were in the video that you watched. And some of them, one of the ones I looked up, are some of your absolute favorites. The astilbe. Yes. Oh, I love the astilbe. coral bells. Did oh. you see that red leaf coral bell in the and take outtake that we did? Beautiful. I have those all over. And coral bells come in every color yes. of the rainbow, and if you put They're them awesome. in partial shade, they are fantastic. Beautiful. And instead of everything being green, or when it's done blooming, it's still just green. It can be a red leaf, a dark red, a plum, a, a few beautiful colors it comes in. So among with that there is a beautiful plant you saw in the clip there, the pulmonaria. Pulmonaria yes. uh, and you yep. every pulmonaria that you buy is going to be a little bit different. So you can buy one that's spotted, one that's striped, mm -hmm. one that has um, a lot of uh, silver in it uh, and they 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 kind of molt, they change. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just a fabulous plant for the shade. And then the uh, Brunaria? Uh, br oh, I don't forget. Oh, how do we br pronounce uh, that? Brunera. Brunera. Uh, no, that's not I'm it. I'm like about an organic um, pesticide for like peach trees. Yeah, we have a oh, caller about have organic, a caller. Organic, pesticides organic pesticides on peach trees. Yeah, there is an organic pesticide, as a matter of fact. Uh, and I'm going to have to mention uh, two of the local stores because I don't know anywhere else you could get it. But Tractor Supply and the feed store down Love on the... Love the new Tractor Supply. On the uh, overpass feed. down Fayette Feed. On the fill. They have an organic fruit tree spray. Uh, it's a very uh, good quality stuff. Now how soon can you eat the fruit after spraying? Uh, it says one day. If I spray, and I suffer from Agent Orange, so I don't take any chances. Yeah, and, but it's and organic. You want to stay away from uh, treating when it gets uh, within two weeks of harvest. As Just far as, as a concerned. rule of thumb. But here's where you start. If you want to go organic with your treatment of peaches, pears, plums, apples, you want to start with a dormant spray, dormant oil. What does uh, that mean, and honey? sulfur. There's an oil that is called dormant oil that you spray on your fruit tree, and it coats the tree as well as the eggs and the larva of the insects so that it suffocates them now, naturally you, with a natural oil. You do now, this before oil, it bears fruit? You do this in the wintertime. When it's dormant. When That's it's the point. Dormant, okay. dormant oil, lime sulfur. Sulfur is also mixed with that, you dormant oil and lime sulfur. You spray that on the tree. Uh, it will kill all of the carryover stuff. So now you're starting from scratch. You don't have a lot of nonsense. Now that's great for don't next leave. year. <clears throat> well, you got to But start. what does she do now if I she wants? She said you use the organic. Okay, gotcha. And, but uh, now you want to make sure you don't leave weeds around the bottom. Mow it as short as you can. And don't leave any old fruit. No old fruit whatsoever because it in, it brings in diseases yeah. and insects, insects and all kinds of stuff. Keep it as clean as you possibly can. Uh, let's see, the last thing would be to spray in the spring, and they recommend that you, that with the organic, they recommend that you spray with, uh, uh, at first bud. So now here's the deal. You want the bees to come and pollinate, so you want to spray before the bees are going to get there. Oh. Then after the bees are done, then you spray when the fruit has set. When you see the little bitty fruit set, okay. then you spray the second That time. makes perfect sense, really. So you want to make sure you're not spraying within that bee uh, You don't want to scare off the bees because that's the whole point of their job. And if you job. want additional fruit 
find a beehive, or even better, get a beehive. We're going to do an entire show. I, I want bees. Let's get some we're bees. We're going to do an entire show on uh, on beehives because it's we're losing them all over the country, and we're losing the bees. And if you get bees around your garden, you around your fruit why. trees, you increase production yes. by 40%. Without bees, there would be no fruit, no vegetables, on or anything. On many things and that are open pollinated, yeah. Um, so, uh, you, starting here, you go, you get the organic, you ask them, and they do have a, a, a fabulous organic spray for the peach trees. And uh, but stay away for two weeks from fruit, for, uh, from when the fruit should be ripe. And it is important to follow <clears throat> those instructions about how much to mix and and oh, you yeah. know how follow to the apply. Instructions. Even though it's organic, lock yep. it up, put it where no kids can get at it. Uh, chemicals uh, or, or even organics are dangerous. And if you would like a personal house call from the garden doctor to take a look at your tree or anything else going on in your yard, make sure and leave your information with the nice it's people free, in the no studio. It's free, no obligation. I don't want to sell you anything, nope. and I don't want to do any work he for He just wants yard. to help you. I'll just give you information. It's free. That's the kind of guy I am. Yes. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll leave your right. information with that. the studio. Thank you, All thank right. you very thank much. Thank you very much. And spread the word. Tell everybody. Yep. And we might even end up with a contest here later on. Uh, just, uh, and let's just list off some more of these little shade-loving plants. The dead nettle. Oh, oh we have I grown. love oh. dead nettle. If you have not lately uh, visited a nursery, go to a nursery and find this dead nettle. Oh, it's fabulous. It's colorful. It's it's uh, very easy to grow. And it grows in the shade. It's, it's a shade yeah. plant. Then we've got this Veach's Blue Globe Thistle. We have a thistle. That, oh, the most beautiful blue. Oh, it's big blue. Uh, oh, and you know what awesome. I like even better than that is Sea Holly. It's like a thorny thistle. Oh. And it has the big cluster. I used to have it, but the guys thought it was regular thistle. And, and then there's the Solomon Seal. Then you just Solomon love. Seal. Yep. Oh, I love yep. that thing. Now we have this. Uh, just got to start from somebody. A uh, couple of iris. The These iris Chinese grower out there by the triangle. Can't oh, okay. Think of I can't either. He gave us a, a start of some Chinese roof iris. Could be Japanese. Is, oh, maybe. Now Japanese. you tell me. It's uh, also called the rabbit ear iris, but it's one of the varieties of iris. It's a shorter leaf. Uh, when it's not in bloom that grows in the shade and so, they use it on the roof for erosion purposes and instead of uh, putting grass on the roof this is what grows up there so I've got some starts of that I'm gonna try now also we uh, had a question about and I had got my questions mixed up on the computer I apologize about Asiatic lilies that will they grow in shade they they'll grow in the shade but they don't like it sometimes they get leggy you can and that's grow what them the computer shade, said too just not heavy shade yep, see the computer yep. knew what you were gonna say Aha. and so yes if you give them more Sun they will do a lot better now you know we're big on day lilies we oh, grow yeah. several varieties many varieties have them at the plant sale we Come have every year and just yeah just drive look. around and walk around look even at if that. you just want to look, look we have paths the blossoms. and flowers there's, there's usually at least 100 150 different blossoms different colors going on and and uh, just come down and you can actually see many of it most of it by just driving around yeah. we but have in a general through. all the day lilies really want as much sun as they can get for yep. the most part now the darker colored blossoms like the purples the dark reds they can tolerate less sun actually they prefer less sun yes. because they will burn out they mm -hmm. will they will actually get a, a, a sunburn condition mm -hmm. so they prefer to be in the shade in the afternoon but it says one thing sun. they cannot live without is water they are a water plant yeah, no matter where you plant. have them you can, sun you can or grow shade. them right in a I, I put them in a pot and put them yep, in a lake gotta have a lot I've of water there, yes their whole blooming season and now also it, they said like uh, where water runs off a roof you can and on a shady side of a house you definitely can plant daylilies the thing is they won't all they won't necessarily bloom however because they have such a great root structure they're great for a Erosion. They will hold that soil and they will stop erosion. And another, the one exception to that was then, I didn't realize this, if light, indirect light from bouncing off, say, a white wall of the house will be enough sunlight for them to bloom. Yeah, refracted light yep. um, uh, is, is fabulous for growing a lot of stuff. Now, we have actually even put uh, doors 
in the landscape that had windows in them uh -huh. and turned the, the windows in such a fashion that we were getting uh, a light in underneath and shaded areas. So you can grow daylilies in the shade. You'll have beautiful green foliage. You won't necessarily have a lot of blossom unless they're the darker varieties or unless you have that refracted sunlight. And so. uh, um, Evelyn Wilson used to grow her daylilies with, on wheels. And she had a lot of heavy mm -hmm, shade, mm -hmm. so she would pull them out in the sun, let them get all the sun they needed in the morning, then she would pull them back in the shade to go. enjoy them <laughs> in the backyard. So you can do that if you're, if you're <laughs> and want to say hi to Evelyn. Uh, I think she just celebrated her 94th. Oh, my. 95th, I, something like that. And hi to uh, Roberta Welch. I'm, I'm not sure. She's a beautiful woman. I don't know what her age is. No, boy, I wouldn't is ask. she pretty. <laughs> she and, is. Uh, She's beautiful. Uh, yeah. And also, last time we were here, we talked about my son's open heart surgery was yes. coming. He did have his open heart surgery, had a valve replaced. They uh, did a fabulous job. He is re still recovering, of course, got a long way to go, doing beautifully, getting strong stronger every day and the surgery was a complete success thank uh, you for they, your prayers and, and they did well it without wishes. cracking his chest yeah they, they still call they it open heart surgery and they still right, put you on the bypass open. machine but they don't cut you here and crack your sternum anymore that is not necessary at least at st vincent's at rhode island they were still planning yeah, on doing so. that so. but the doctors are so fabulous and the new uh, developments in medicine are just amazing they do it internally i even have pictures of the valve from inside it's thank amazing the calls that so you have you. Uh, and thank you for the, your prayers and, and good wishes. Well wishes to appreciate uh, my it. surgery uh, has, has started to heal on yep. the hand up here the elbow not so much yet I, well, I need a little while longer. The, if and he then, would stop working for five minutes, well, he was at work. He was trying to do stuff the next day. You can't make him They gave me sit too still. much pain medication. You can't do that to people. Okay? <laughs> he felt great. Go I use this I was arm. Superman, you know, you saw him on the video flailing your arm Lord around. Lord have mercy. So no, I couldn't make him stop. But he, he's definitely getting some well-deserved relief. There is relief. some improvement, massive improvement. He has suffered for years. It would years be up all with night that. with a brace on and everything. I couldn't do anything. So, yeah, now I can hopefully do a lot Yeah, more I would fishing. like to do some fishing if you ever stop for five uh, well, minutes and take uh, me fishing. That would be nice. I am available if you call in on the live show. I'm going to go home and call in, and then you can come to my house, and I'm going to kidnap you to go fishing. Oh, How's there that? you go. Okay. <laughs> that, that'll work. If you call in on the live show, this show or the very next show, we will. Uh, I will come to your house for free. I will give you an evaluation of everything that is in your yard. Whatever your lawn, you want. Your trees, your shrubs, your downspouts, the, the erosion around your building, the water in your basement. He doesn't want your job. He doesn't want your money. If he just the sidewalk wants to is share. floating, if you've got uh, cracks in the driveway and you, you're not sure why, I'll tell you how to fix it. If your back patio has got weeds all over it and you don't want those weeds, you want to get rid of them forever and ever, I'll tell you how to do that. If you want to grow a garden and you don't have any place for a garden, I'll tell you how to grow one. If you, uh, we just built a little garden for Bud Whipple, raised it up in the air about this high so that he oh, didn't have he to got? bend down so low. Oh, he's got he's got radishes and lettuce and, oh, and uh, cool. you know, the guy next door is the uh, manager at the, um, uh, I don't know what this is called now. Oh, is the, the multi-named grocery that thing store. Is. Or by the fountain. Yeah, yes. there you go. And uh, so, you know, eventually Bud will be selling to him directly, probably. You just <laughs> nice. unbelievable amounts of Well, I'm very pleased with our garden. We've gotten some peas, which oh, have been yeah, delicious. Yeah. I've eaten two cherry tomatoes so far. Broccoli. Uh, I've got oh, broccoli and cauliflower. Cauliflower. And I got Brussels kale. sprouts coming. And kale. Swiss chard. Oh, and she delicious. just ate Swiss chard. I, I didn't want to eat maybe. it. Maybe. For the first I, time. Definitely, first time. Swiss chard is delicious. I thought it would be people. bitter like spinach. I'm not a big fan of spinach. And let me tell you something. Right. Grow the beets just for the greens. Yeah, that's what he grows Beet them for. Beet greens are the most fantastic. But I have greens. to say, I've had those, and I really think the Swiss chard, there's no bitter to it whatsoever. I not put a bit. butter, some minced garlic no in there, either. boil it down. It's delicious. Wow. And All colorful. Right. This, I, I think she said that we have... Seven minutes? One minute? Two ah, minutes? I don't. <laughs> we got a few seconds. We got a call coming in, and we're going to take that call yes, back in there. Yes, we are. Uh, uh, we can't. We probably don't have time to do, do it out here. Do we have time to take but, it? Uh, she's going to write it down. I'm going to go to the house, and I will give them answer all of their questions out there. And we so much. We're on the air. Well, go right ahead. Do you have a question? Yes, I do. Okay. Fire it up. Okay. We just fertilized our lawn last week with weed and feed. Yes. Uh -huh. And this week we noticed some brown strips and spots in the lawn. Is this normal? 
Um, <laughs> oh, it it's is. It's normal for yeah. her. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. no, it's not. Mm -hmm. um, Uh-oh. And I can tell you what happened. It's Oops. happened to us. We've done it uh, on a couple of different yards. What happens is spreaders uh, are made and they drop straight down or they broadcast. If you have a spreader that drops straight down, it's you have to turn it down. If it says put it on six, put it down on five and go in two directions. Because it'll dump too much. Broadcast spreader, test it out on the driveway first so you know how much is coming out and never stop. If you're going to turn, Can't stop. you've got to turn it off or you've got to keep on moving and make a big sweep. So, so what happened is she got too much and burnt it? She probably Probably just, uh, yeah, she's probably going to have some stripes, and, and, and they will go away. You may okay. have some burn places. How about some extra water? Will that help? Um, not at this point. Okay. You want to try to suck up. Take a vacuum cleaner out there. Uh -huh. Suck up the vacuum. excess yeah, there wherever you, you can see it. That's I'll really important. And then water it down really, 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 really good. And if you would like them to come out and take a look, we're short of time. Make sure you leave your name and the number information and with the guys at the studio, and he will come out and take a look. And okay. we appreciate uh, all of your calls. Yes, we all, do. Very all, much. Yep. And uh, uh, if you have a call, we, we might have time one, after the show. We may have time for one call even after we close Ooh, the show. Oh, you stick around for a minute, yeah. huh? I will stick around for and a minute. And as usual, I have to say hi, Dad. Yes, I have to say that. And we, uh, we also have to say hi to all of the, the wonderful people that support the show. Thank you. You're out there all of the time, and, and we love it. Thank you very much. We will see you on the next show. The Garden Doctor